Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to JP's Creations! Today I'm going to be making some recolors of some paper miniatures. The miniatures in question are some tiny little, uh, kobolds that are made by Trash Mob Minis. Uh, their art is available at DriveThruRPG with some links down in the bottom if you want to follow those to go get some that you can print yourself. If, however, you don't really want to take on the hassle of printing them with having to buy tons and tons and tons of ink, and even worse, having to sit down with a pair of scissors and cut them out for hours on end, well, I've got the perfect solution. I partnered up with them, and I have available for sale entire pages of minis that are uh, printed, double-sided, laminated, and uh, mine are all laser cut, so their edges are always nice and clean. I'm gonna be uh, selling these ones, so if you want these pages that I made here, uh, they're available for sale for uh, paper miniatures that are, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, laser cut. Lasers! Yeah! Now, getting to today's project. Uh, the reason that I'm going to be recoloring these is because I just kind of want to. Also, there's a whole bunch of them, and having a set that's purple, blue, green, uh, yellow, orange, and red means that we could look at them in game and be like, hmm, I attack the flying red kobold. And everybody would know exactly which kobold you're attacking because there's only one of them that's both flying and red. See, it, it makes some kind of sense. So without further ado, let's get into the program. I will be using Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint for this. Uh, I've already went ahead and taken them from their original layout, and I put them into this layout. Uh, this is the original ones that came with the pack, and as you notice, they've all got a little bit of blue accents to them, except for the armored guy. He has all red accents, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is change those red accents to blue. That way he matches the rest of them. So I uh, went ahead and did that and made him blue. But then you might notice that this giant lizard over here has no accents of any kind. Well, damn. So I need to add some kind of accent to him. And I thought this sash looked pretty good. So, I grabbed that sash and cut it out of there as a, uh, a copy that is a power clip, which is essentially a, uh, vector line, which you can see is the outline there, and it is a cropping based on that line, which is pretty handy, because then, when I drug it over here, I could skew it and stretch it and even rotate it so that it sat in the position that seemed to look correct and you know something like so and after I messed everything up after I had it in somewhat position I went in and edited the lines so that it fit and it sat around their jaw and shoulders uh, just like so. And once I had it all fit in correctly so it looked right, I took all of that and I compressed it into a bitmap. Uh, my printer is 600 DPI, so I change it up to 600 dpi when I'm working with them and printing with them that way I get uh, results I can uh, expect 
I guess. Results that are consistent. That's the word I was trying to think of. Consistent results. So, once I had all of those ready, then I had to send it over the program I was using. Uh, this could be done in Photoshop or GIMP. Uh, I happen to be using Pharrell, Corel Photo Paint because I can just send it there with one button click. Uh, but I'm just gonna show you through the ones I've already went and re-recolored. So I started off by recoloring everything on the top level and then I found out once I had the, uh, once I had them all printed out, I was able to see that like in the capes, I lose all of the color detail except for the original one and I don't have enough contrast, it turns out, is the problem in the colors. It's the, uh, the value of the color. Uh, I don't have enough gaps between those, so they just kind of blend together in one color. That's a shame. So instead, I went in and I re-recolored them, and that's what this bottom row is as we scan across. You can see how everything just pops more, it's brighter and lighter in the bottom row. And that's the main thing I learned, is things have to be lighter than you think they are when printed. Good to know. So, now I'm going to recolor this one to a purple that's lighter than this one, so that it will look better on the page. And I'll show you how I do all of that. I uh, click on the edit bitmap button here, and that will open Corel uh, Photo Paint. I don't already have it open, so it's going to take an amount of time. There it is. Hey, look at those sexy guys. So, uh, once I have it into the program, this would work the exact same way, whether you're in Photoshop, GIMP, or Corel Photo Paint. I'm just using it because it talks with the other program well. Doesn't matter. We're gonna do the exact same thing. First off, if we were to recolor them without uh, selecting and masking off certain areas, we would change the color of everything, and we don't wanna do that. So, we're gonna start off by masking just what we do want to work with. So in this program, all of the masks are under this area, and I'll be going to the magic wand mask, which is a magic wand no matter what program you're using. They all have them, they're amazing. Great tool. Uh, I have my tolerance set pretty low because I just don't want it to collect other stuff and I can click more times. And I'm going to make sure I'm in an additive mode. What this means is every time I click, it will just keep adding to the selection that I have and I don't have to hold any buttons. Otherwise holding shift will usually do it and then uh, alt or control will do less. It's, I think it's control in this program. Yep, and when I press control, you can see that my uh, cursor changes to the minus. So that's how that would work. But like I said, additive makes this muy easy. I don't know why I went with Spanish for very or much there. Uh, it, it makes it much easy. So go with the much easy option. Don't make life harder than it has to be. That's just uh, easy living right there. And mainly I'm just kind of filling space with random rantings while I'm paying attention and clicking this. It's a long and tedious process, which is why I recommend that once you get it done once, oop, and if you do something wrong like that, undo, and then go back to what you're doing. Uh, if you get it all done once, save your mask, that way you don't have to go through and do everything again. Uh, in this program, so you see how I have the one done? I already have a mask saved. Uh, by going up to mask, I can either save the current mask, which I don't want to do because this one's only got one of the things, or load from disks. I'm going to load from disk and load the clothing mask that I already made and import that. And there we go, that is the clothing all 
masked off. And as you can see with all of them, there's uh, very, very clean masks that goes just on the blue stuff. That way, when I recolor everything, it only recolors the blue. Uh, speaking of recoloring it, I'm going to be using the replace color tool that's in this program. I'm not sure what the tool name would be in other programs. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Like for instance, uh, you could also go with a hue, saturation, or lightness and just twiddle with the hue that way. Uh, and that does work, as you can see here. Uh, I just find it kind of hard to control exactly where, how it's working. Though, uh, huh, I guess that makes sense. So I, I don't like that method, I guess, very much. It works. I just like the replace color. And for this one, I'm going to be... First, I'll open it in the side-by-side. -side. That way I can grab one of the original colors. And the color that I'm going to be grabbing is the lightest in the group, which will be that color right there. I actually already had it in the palette, but it's always better to make sure. Uh, once I have already chose that, I'm going to go back into seeing them in the full window here because that way I can see all of them and I just like to be able to see exactly what I'm doing and that's why I come into this tool uh, the range on this would normally be used to change exactly what colors we're affecting by the way uh, we could have it set to a hundred percent it doesn't matter we're changing everything uh, the most important thing is we do not want it to be a single destination color. We want it to bring in these multicolored areas. And then the thing I learned in the last one is the lightness. We need to boost that up on these. That's a little too high. I think that will be good. And this is all just uh, guesstimation and judgment by eyeballing and whatnot. Just so you know, there's not really any science here. Uh, it's all just what I've tried and tried and tried again. Then I go into contrast enhancement. And this one I found works well to really uh, spread... Oh, I should start with that on its original. So here's how the photo is originally when I brought it in and what I want to do is this histogram I want to spread it out and just stretch it and the reason that I want to stretch it is so that there's more area between the darkest and the lightest areas so by dragging this top handle I can make the darks more dark and I'll go until they're in a ways and by dragging this handle, I make the lights lighter. And um, I think I went a little too dark on them. There we go. So the thing that I'm mainly trying to get here is any of the uh, details that are drawn in, which on this is like the stitching. Uh, over here we have some creases. And oh, that's just going to be that same one again. So let's find... There we go. And this one has also some creases. I want to make sure that data translates and pops more. And you might be thinking, but John, that makes those kobolds look way lighter. Don't worry. It's in a mask, remember? So it only affects the things that I have selected in the mask. It doesn't change them any. It only changes their outfits. Uh, and once that's all done, there are two ways to output this. We could either click finish editing and it would send us back to the program. Or if you want to do multiple steps at once, you could hit save as and save it as whatever name you happen to want, like Cobalt's purple light because I have some dark ones that are in here. Those are the bad ones. 
So I save it with the good ones. And, voila, I could then uh, undo a couple of steps back to where I started and do the exact same thing all over again. So, since I saved it, <laughs> well, the next thing is to open it from that location. Here's my cobalt's purple light that I just made. And I will drop that in and just put it in the same line with the rest of these guys. Boosh. And if we compare that to the one above it, we can see it is much lighter, which is the goal that was intended. So, bada bing. So, once I have those all in, I'm gonna be going back through my process to put them uh, into the right layout for my stuff, which will be, oops, I need that real quick. Something I meant to do earlier with these. So I'm going to drop in these here. go and now I just need to make sure I'm getting a hold of ah there's one not the one I'm looking for boom those two get rid of them all right so I now have this that I will be dropping onto each of these and I'm going to be pushing space each time that I'm hovering in the right spot and it will drop a copy. That's one of those uh, handy little things in Corel. Space when you're dragging will drop a copy and it also turns the one you're holding into a copy. So wherever I set this down, it will leave the original one where it was. Uh, this isn't the optimal way for me to be moving. As you can see, it's rendering a whole slice moving render slice move render slice it's it's altogether bad so oh i even have an extra that i don't need whatever now that i know that i have those in the right place here's the stuff where it gets cool check this out uh first i want to make sure i can't interact with the cut layer and i'll just make it invisible that way it's not interfering and i'm going to take this picture and power clip it inside of that vector. And once it does that, I have them all trimmed. And if I ungroup them, you can see that each one will maintain its picture and whatnot. And that's how I'm able to manipulate the photos. And yet you can still click inside of it and actually access the base photo. It's just an interesting way of working with them. It's a neat tool. Uh, and now I froze up the program because I was screwing with it. So power clipping is very cool. This is in no way a complete tutorial on how to do it. It's just uh, mentioning if you happen to need some stuff trimmed by a vector in a very cool way, power clip. However, if you're printing them, the power clips don't always print right. So we're gonna have to do a step where we go from the power clip into a uh, bitmap. And that's something that I just do with all of them, which for instance, the page that I printed them on before, as you can see, it is a bitmap. There's the back layer and the front layer I just make whichever one I want to print on the top, and it works out perfectly fine. Uh, and I do also have to uh, make it so that one's mirrored for the front and back, and that's for my double-sided printing. Uh, not too important. I guess I could have just shown you right there. Uh, because right now, I need to go through and power clip 
all of these, which will be fun. It'll just take a little while for it to load stuff up. So, power clip inside. Oh, I, I fucked up. These are supposed to be up here. Go back where you belong. There we go. Now I can power clip. Power clip away! If you notice, I put them up to the top. That way when I click into my left click menu here, or right click menu, it automatically has power clip next to my cursor. Whereas if I were clicking something down here, power clip would be way up at the top. It's just those little things. Gotta love the little things. So there we go. All of those are now power clipped. I can turn my cut layer back on because I'm going to be manipulating stuff and oh I fucked up uh, I'm gonna be turning my art layer off real quick and getting rid of one of these because I fucked up so say goodbye to that one and now for the unfucking alright now I need to separate all of these power clips because they're all as a group of two objects and when I ungroup those I can grab all of the bottom ones which will be still groups of six and I will cut them from the front layer and paste them into the back layer and I'll grab all of these and I'm going to just ungroup everything because I don't want them grouped uh, that way if I need to move things it doesn't mess stuff up then I need to mirror it. That way I can slide the top or the backs in front of the fronts. And I'm going to hold shift as I drag so that I can't move them sideways. I can only move them up or down to get them right into the right position and drop them. And now I'm going to actually select Select all of the fronts and backs. Right now I have the backs, so I'll just do my step. I'm going to right click to make my outline disappear on those. And I'm gonna go up and collect all of my red outlined front ones and do the same. Uh, that way they blend into their background and I don't need the outline. That was just so I could see them earlier. There we go. Now they blend into the background. They have their tabs ready for cutting since I made those all before and they're much brighter. Now I just need to put them onto a print layout page. So I'm going to go ahead and steal the border and all of the info and whatnot from this one. So I am going to take all of it. Oh, I need to turn my borders back on. Just a second. Borders. I guess I can get rid of all these ones. Boop, boop. So I get rid of those. Grab the thing that I was trying to grab earlier, and bring a copy of it down. So to make that copy, I drug it down, and then I clicked the right mouse button when I was hovering where I wanted it, the new copy to live, and it made it into a, a copy there uh, and then I'm going to select all of the figures in here and delete them because I'm going to replace them with this second row uh, I need to zoom out one more click though so I'm going to grab all of the guys in the second row and drag down to make a copy of them that way I can uh, line them all up and leave a copy here in case I need to come back and do other things with them later. So I'm going to start dragging them up and placing them at least on the page but I'm not going to be very careful about where exactly they are because I will take care of that after I zoom in. I just want to have them all where they will be easy to grab once I am zoomed in. 
Speaking of which, it's now Zoom time! Up here to a good position. These ones are still just a little too orange for me. I might have to mess with them later. Alright, so the key that I'm trying to get here is to make sure I don't go over the text. I am a little bit right there. So there we go. That's perfect. And I'm going to use this guideline set off of that so I can make sure all of them are at least lined up with each other. Just makes them look a little bit prettier for the finished set. Um, and when you're doing things like this where you're lining them off of a point, make sure it's an easy node to grab a hold of anytime you're doing your stuff and whatnot. Don't make it harder on yourself. All right, good enough. And now I just need these last couple. Go away text, nobody wants you selected! At least not right now. There are times I do need to select text, but this is not one of them. All right, now that they're all nice and lined up, I am actually going to select the text. Uh, and that's because I need to do some adjustment with it. And I also need to move my cut back behind my fill layer. That way, all of my cut lines disappear and they won't be seen on the printer uh, or the printed page. In my text, I need to select and make it all uh, filled. That way, my pages will look right. Then I grab all of these, copy them, and I'll go with here and start propagating my pages. So, I need to take this and put it into the center position, which I have to put some grid lines on so I can actually line it up right. So let's go with, uh, let's go with the page you've already seen, page six. I'm gonna come in here and drop some, not that one, some grid lines for the top and bottom corners. That way, I know exactly where to adjust that to. So I'll press Control A to grab it all and drop that node there. And then I press Control C to make a copy of it in that position and paste it again. And then I'm going to mirror everything horizontally that way it will line up with the front side because this is the back side, which is why I drug that front art back behind the back page so it looks all correct. And now I just have a couple of issues, one being my text is all backwards. So I selected the text and I'm going to mirror that horizontally again to put it back where it was originally. But uh, I also have to account for the fact that my printer, it always prints the backs a little bit lower on the page than the front. So I'm going to correct for that offset right now by adding uh, 0 0.055 inches over here to my Y, which when I hit enter, will move this page's contents up by that amount and that will correct my printer's offset so that when I send this to the printer they will all sit correctly. Now I'm just going to double check everything. Uh, my text is correct. 
I'm looking at their backs, and they are uh, horizontally mirrored to the fronts, and uh, that all looks right. Now I'm just going to make sure I have my cut page so that once they're all printed, I can actually cut them. So I'm going to drop my things there, and I'm gonna delete uh, the top four layers, which has the text, the front art, the back art, and the fills, which will leave just the borders and the cut lines. Uh, I'm going to select this one border and make it orange, which is the color I use to cut uh, that outline. And there our cut page is ready. Our print pages still have one issue. If we click into that group, you'll see everything is still a power clip. Remember earlier that I mentioned a power clip will not cut or print correctly. So we need to convert all of these power clips into a bitmap. I will do that by hitting Alt B, which could also be done by actually clicking that menu right there and hit convert to bitmap. Uh, the bitmap that I'm converting them to will be 600 DPI, which they are already in 600 DPI since I upsampled them at an earlier step. And I will accept that and do the same with all the rest. And we're on the back page, so I need to do that with the front page as well. And the fun fact is, right here with this second one, I could actually just delete this all together, but I like to save it just because it's handy to have to fall back on. Um, that should be everything there. So, now that I have all that, let's go ahead and save. That way I don't lose any of this data if my computer crashes. I always forget to do that step. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and print. As this pulls up my menu, I already have uh, some settings saved. So I load my settings for double-sided printed minis, and I'm gonna need to change my pages to the actual pages to print, which right now, is page five and page six. So I set it to page five and six. The other settings that are uh, set by that that are important, I'll open the preferences. The most important thing is that we're printing at a high quality. So the quality is set to high. Uh, on my printer, I should be using photo paper because I am using a photo paper. However, it won't let me duplex if I do that. So I have it thinking that it's plain paper just so I can duplex it. It still prints the exact same whether it's a photo page or a uh, plain paper page as far as the quality when I have it set to high quality. So there, we're fine. The other important thing is the scaling of the image. We don't want it to scale to say fit to page. That would mess us up and it would make our figure that is supposed to be this tall be actually this tall, which may not be that much of a difference. But when our laser cutter is ready to cut it, if that has been turned to that, everything will be off. It will not laser cut correctly. So we cannot in any sense do a fit to page. Instead, you should either do a normal sized or what I like to do is scale and scale the to 100%. That way I know when I tell it this is an inch, it knows and prints out something that's an inch. So that's my personal way, is scaled 100%. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of a long, boring tirade. Sorry if that's stuff you already knew. 
once I know everything's right, I tell it to go to the printer, and it takes a while. Uh, all right. So now that I have all of those uh, outlined and put onto the page and whatnot, I need to laminate them and then laser cut them. Laminating them's pretty easy. Uh, you won't believe how easy it is. With a thermal laminator, there's really only two steps. Step one is to fight with the laminate page to try to open it because the edges are always a pain to actually get split. There we go. So you fight with it until you finally get it open and then you take your page and with me, I always like to, uh, if I'm draping it this way, I just drape it over the edge like so and that one is done and ready to be fed into the laminator. So you just pass it through the laminator and it has a roller that will apply heat across the top and bottom as it passes through. Put it in the pouch, run it through the laminator, you're done. Alrighty, so now that we have our pages all uh, ready for printing, printed and done, they look great, we need to laser cut them. Here's what that looks like when it's laser cutting. Pretty cool, right? Yeah.
and it turned out way better. I, I am very happy with how this one turned out. And here is how it looks in the, uh, the thingamajig. Yeah, nice, right? Uh, and here's a head head comparison of it and the old one. And you can see what I was meaning when I was saying that the colors in the original capes were super washed out in their uh, color gradients that they're supposed to have, including all of the other characters as well. Uh, I'm, I'm much happier with these. The reds look red, oranges look orange, yellow. They all pop, and they're all very, very nice. I, I'm going to be uh, selling these ones. So if you want these pages that I made here, uh, they're available for sale for uh, paper miniatures that are, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Laser cut. Lasers! Yeah!